Okay, so welcome back. And uh, so we're going to do some more examples of putting fractions in the lowest terms. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple ways of uh, looking at these. So I'm going to start with finding the greatest common factor, the largest number that will divide the top and the bottom, right? That's what we want to look for. Sometimes it's not easy to find that number. Okay, but we want to try to see if we can find the largest number that we know will divide both the top and the bottom. So in this case here, we have 30 and 48. So we want to know what's the largest number that will divide both 30 and 48. Okay, and so if we look at this, um, we start looking at like multiples, right? Or, or um, divisors of both, right? Um, and so if we look at this, we find, well, the largest number that I can think of is going to be 6. Because 6 divides 30, and 6 also divides 38, or 48. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by, um, by um, 6. So I'm going to do 30 divided by 6 over 48 divided by 6. And so what is that going to give me? That's going to give me 5 eighths. And then I look at the 5 eighths and ask myself, OK, is there, is there anything larger than 1 that will divide both of those? And the answer is no. OK? Uh, 5 is a prime number, so I know the only numbers that will divide 5 is 5 and 1. And, and five, is, 5 definitely does not divide 8. So since the largest number that will divide both of those is 1, we're done. So 5 eighths is, in lowest, is the lowest term. Okay? Um, now, there's another way I could have done this. Okay? So let's... Right, this is a different way. I could have done this. I could have written this as, uh, since I'm looking for numbers that will divide, I could also look at it as multiplication, splitting, splitting up the 30 and the 48 into factors, right? Because knowing that the largest number that will divide both of these is 6, I can write this as 5 times 6 divided by what? 8 times 6. And then now, what I can do here is, since I've got multiplication across division, I can cancel these two. Because the 6 divides out the 6, and we call that canceling. Okay? And to see it better is, we could write this as 5 eighths times 6 over 6, which is just 1 and then 1 times 5 eighths. So what we do is we, we call it canceling because they're dividing out to be 1. OK? And so we would just cancel this and this becomes 1, right? And then we just get 5 eighths. So again, you could use canceling, or you could just divide the top and the bottom by the largest number that will divide both. <coughs> So let's do this one. Okay, so what's the largest number that will divide 105 and 90? Okay, um, that's going to be 15. So now let's write this as what? Excuse me. Um, let's write this as 105 divided by 15 and 90 divided by 15. And so 105 divided by 15, well 15, 60, right, 45, or excuse me, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, right, and then 105, so 7. So you get 7 here, and this is going to be 6. So we get 7 sixths. Okay. And again, you, I could have wrote it as <clears throat> 7 times um, 15 over um, 
6 times 15, and then 15 divides 15, right? 15 divided by 15 is 1, 15 divided by 15 is 1, so I get 1 and 1, right? And so then I get 7 sixth, okay, using canceling. Now, what about this one here? Well, what's the largest number that will divide both the top and the bottom? Well, in this case, it's 3. Well, 6 divided by 6 is 2. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So 6 divided by 3, I think I misspoke. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. And, but this is just equal to 2, right? 2 divided by 1 is 2. So we could just write 2 simply as 2. So 6 thirds in lowest terms really is just 2. And that's it. See you next time.